Hello and welcome to the second video for the part one algebra module in the review modules. We're going to talk about order of operations today. As with the basics of arithmetic, I hope this is familiar material, but it's worth going over because it's so fundamental and because the notation and the terminology might be different from your background. So the order of operations that again you're hopefully somewhat familiar with, starting with parentheses, we use parentheses um, as our basic way of indicating something takes precedence. So whatever happens in the parentheses happens first, and then we do whatever happens outside according to the other rules. I've written this additional piece here of inside pieces, and that might not have been something that was originally on your list when you studied order of operations. What I mean by that is if we have something in a square root, for example, or inside some other kind of function in the denominator of a, of a fraction inside a sine or cosine function, inside something else, we have to do those inside pieces first. And explicitly what's going on is we we sort of are grouping these like they were parentheses. The thing inside the square root is grouped like a parentheses. So you can think of the inside pieces sort of as implicit parentheses, if you wish, and they happen with precedence over anything else. So make sure you sort of look for the inside pieces of functions. Then we move on to our basic operations of arithmetic. Exponents happen first. Note that square roots and other roots are essentially just exponents. I think we'll talk about when we talk about roots and exponents later. So they have the same order of precedence as other exponents. So square roots happen before the last two steps on this list. Following exponents, we have multiplication and division. And then following multiplication, we have addition and subtraction. Now I'm going to work through a couple of examples to try and make the subtleties of this clear and, and do a general reminder for everyone for how we're actually working with order of operations. So here's an example. We have parentheses here. They take precedence. So I'm going to do the thing in parentheses first, which is the 5 minus 2 turns into 3. Then I have an exponent. It takes precedence over uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So I do my exponent first. 3 squared is 9. Then I have an addition and a division. The division takes precedence. So I'm going to do the 21 divided by 7, which is 3 first. Then finally, I do my addition. And this expression evaluates down to 12 in the correct order of operations. Here's an example where I have a bunch of division and multiplication. Division and multiplication all happened at one step in the order of operations. So I can actually do these in whatever order I want. I can do the divisions first. I can do the multiplications first. I can do the numerator multiplication first. I can do the denominator multiplication first. I can rearrange things because I can rearrange the orders. So here I actually have a lot of freedom of choice. What I did in this case is I multiplied these first to get 60. I multiply these to get 240. Then I multiplied these. Oh, I made a mistake here. It should be uh, 10 in the denominator. 2 times 5 is, of course, not 24. And then 240 divided by 10 is correctly 24. That is a fine order, but I could have also done first 10 divided by 2 is 5, and that would give me 5 times 6 times 4 over 5, and then 5 divided by 5 is 1, so that would be 1 times 6 times 4, and if I multiply all those together, I would likewise get 24 again. So I've got a lot of choice, a lot of different ways that I can do this when I have things that happen in the same tier of order of operations. All right, now I have a square root with an inside piece. And as I said, I'm going to do all the insides first. In that inside, I have an addition and an exponent. So inside the inside, I still have to follow the other order of operations. So I'm going to do my exponent first. 5 squared is 25. Then I'm going to do my addition. 25 plus 11 is 36. And then in this expression, I have a square root. I have a multiplication. I have a division. I have a subtraction. The square root happens on the exponent level, which is before multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So what happens first? Square root of 36 is 6. Then I've got this denominator, which is sort of an inside piece itself. Um, so before I do any division, 6 divided by things, I need to make sure this inside piece makes sense. So the 4 times 5 um, in the inside, the multiplication happens before subtraction, gives me 20. Then the subtraction can happen 20 minus 14 gives me 6, then 6 over 6 equals 1. And I point this out because this, this inside thing is quite important here. If I sort of erase to make this a little bit more clear again, um, 
here I've got a division, but this division can't actually happen until this subtraction takes place. And that's out of order, because subtraction is supposed to come after divisions. But what's happening is there is that this 6 is divided by this whole thing. So this whole thing is an inside piece of the division. So I sort of implicitly have parentheses there. If I wanted to put them in to make it explicit, I could put them in. So that subtraction has to happen before the division in this step happens. And that's what I'm talking about when I mean things that happen inside other things. So things that are inside the square root, things that are inside division, essentially, inside the denominator of a fraction. And that's the review of order of operations.